will be discussing one pediatric endocrinology question. A 5 year old boy presented with respiratory distress, altered sensorium and pain abdomen. Urine dipstick is suggestive of ketonuria, pH is 7.1, bicarb is 13 and delta ratio is 1 and CBG is high. What is the diagnosis? So in order to understand this question, we need to understand two various spectrum. First is the spectrum of metabolic acidosis. So let us understand the spectrum of metabolic acidosis and we'll come back to the question and we'll try to find out the diagnosis of this question. Normal pH is 7.35 to 7.45. If the pH is less than 7.35 it is known as acidosis if the my bicarbonate is low then i have to see the carbon dioxide level how can i see the ex uh, measure the expected pco2 level by the winters formula so expected pco2 is 1.5 into bicarb plus 8 plus minus 2 okay so now if we are sure that this we are dealing with metabolic acidosis next step is to see that what is the plasma anion gap It is a gap between the unmeasured anions minus the unmeasured cations. So what is the formula? Sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate. Okay. So normal anion gap is 8 to 12 milliequivalents. If after calculating, sometimes in some ABG machines, you get a calculated value of anion gap and in the rest you will be definitely you will get the electrolytes and you will have to calculate it from there. So if it falls under this range we call it as normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. If it is higher we take the higher value to be 16. If it is more than 16 then we call it to be high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So whether it falls in the normal anion gap metabolic acidosis or it falls in the high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So whether in the normal anion gap metabolic acidosis or in the high anion gap metabolic acidosis. This is what we need to know. Right? So let us see some causes of high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So first is the glycols, we have the ethylene glycol, we can also remember about the antifreeze agents that is used in car. Next is the oxoproline, L-lactate, D-lactate, methanol, Aspirin, poisoning, renal failure, ketoacidosis. So these are the causes of high anion gap metabolic acidosis. You can remember it by a mnemonic GOLD mark. So G O L D M A R K. Right. So next, if it falls in the normal anion gap range, so what are the causes of normal anion gap metabolic acidosis? So normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, you will have renal tubular acidosis or there is a pancreatic diarrhea or 
यूरेटेरोमी यूरेटेरिक डाइवर्शन और यू कैन रिमेंबर यूरेटेरोमी राइट सो वंस यू सी दैट इट फॉल्स अंडर नॉर्मल एनाइन गैप मेटाबॉलिक एसिडोसिस यू नीड टू कैलकुलेट द यूरिनरी एनाइन गैप because you need to rule out the renal loss whether it is because of the renal tubular acidosis or it is because of gi loss of bicarb so urinary anion gap the formula goes sodium plus potassium minus chloride so here you take into account potassium go back and look in case of plasma anion gap we do not take potassium into account so plasma anion gap you do not take potassium into account whereas in case of urinary anion gap we take potassium into account right so this should be less than 10 milliequivalents per liter okay so if it is positive that means it is because of distal acidification defect or renal tubular acidosis renal tubular acidosis if it is negative that means the chloride level is more that is why it comes out to be negative mainly in the gi loss of bicarb now sometimes if we are not able to uh, say that purely a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis is going or Uh, we are having the high anion gap metabolic acidosis is running so sometimes there can be a mixed pathology for that we need to calculate the delta ratio so let us calculate the delta ratio and see the formula of delta ratio it is delta anion gap by the delta bicarbonate in other ways it is also known as anion gap that which you measure it in the patient right anion gap in the patient or in the child minus 12 divided by 24 minus measured by cup so this is the formula of delta ratio now what is the interpretation of the delta ratio let us see so interpretation of delta ratio goes as if it is less than 0.4 then it is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis okay if it is 0.4 to 0.8 then it is nacma plus hagma if it is 0.82 to 2 that means it is hagma if it is more than 2 then it's high anion gap metabolic acidosis plus metabolic alkalosis so having known this much let us go back and look at uh, the scenario once more so urine dipstick is positive for ketones ph is 7.1 right bicarb is 13 right so that means it is dealing with acidosis this is pco2 is not given over here but we can understand from here that it is something to do with the metabolic acidosis now delta ratio 1 see once more delta ratio 1 means it is falling under hagma right now let us 
come back and look at the causes of high NAN gap metabolic acidosis. There was no mention of glycol, oxoprolin, even the lactates, there was no question of lactate, methanol poisoning, aspirin poisoning, not, even there is no mention of the renal parameters, so, but it is mentioned about the urine dipstick positive for ketone urea, right, ketones. So, it is because of ketoacidosis. So, now we understood that it is a high NAN gap, so this goes out, it is not normal NAN gap because of RTA. And it is not uh, normal NAN gap because of diarrhea, right? So now it is a high NAN gap, and we understood the cause is also DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis, because the CBG is high, right? So again, if we just look back, and even if we have no knowledge about all this, we are, we know that when what happens in DKA, there is hyperglycemia, with there is uh, metabolic acidosis, along with there is a urine dipstick is positive for ketones. If this triad is there, then also we call it as diabetic ketoacidosis. And in this option, we have diabetic ketoacidosis here. So we can mark the answer jolly well from here as well. So in case of diabetic ketoacidosis, the child will present with shortness of breath, pain, abdomen, altered sensorium with a fruity smell in the breath because of ketone bodies being positive. So we can understand that this is a case of diabetic ketoacidosis, diabetic CBG is high, more than 200, ketosis, either the blood ketones will be positive, more than 3 millimoles per liter, or the urine dipstick will be suggestive of ketonuria, and acidosis will be there, that is, metabolic acidosis is going to be present, okay?